So, so we're going to insert an oxygen between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. And oftentimes, again, it's helpful to put in an asterisk for the carbonyl carbon and put in an alpha for the alpha carbon. So here's where I'm going to put the oxygen. Now, this is what used to be the alpha carbon. I don't know if it's really called an alpha carbon anymore, but I'll label it as alpha because it used to be the alpha carbon. So again, the asterisk in this alpha symbol can help us to see what we've done here. And again, in this case, it doesn't matter whether we insert the oxygen on the right or the left because this ketone was symmetrical. So that's the basic uh, reaction right there. It's really, uh, really pretty simple to, if you do it without the mechanism, inserting the oxygen between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon. Here's another reaction that follows the same exact pattern. By the way, this I just, is just a common solvent. The CH2Cl2 is a common solvent for this type of reaction. So this should follow the same basic pattern. Okay, looks like you guys are figuring that out. Again, maybe it'll help to label the carbonyl and the alpha carbon. Now, where the carbonyl used to be connected to the alpha carbon, it's now going to be connected to a oxygen. And the oxygen is connected to the former alpha carbon over here. And then it's just important to make sure that you get the right number of carbons. Maybe it would help to also number the carbons here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is not a very neat picture. But the key thing is to make sure that you've clearly labeled that you have. Well, if they're giving you MCPVA in CH2Cl2, how do you know that it's not going to be what MCPVA usually does? Because it starts with an um. Mm. That was when it had an alkene bond, and here we're starting with a carbon. Okay. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's a good question and a good answer. What does MCPVA uh, do to an alkene? It turns into an oxycyclopropane. But what does MCPVA do to an aldehyde or a ketone? It inserts an oxygen. By the way, this is called an ester. You'll be studying that in a week or so. So it makes an ester over here. But the key thing is it inserts an oxygen between the carbonyl and the alpha carbon. And this doesn't have to be MCPVA. Again, any per acid is going to give us the same result here. They're not going to be testing different reactions from different uh, types of acids. This is a seven-membered ring now. It's not that easy to draw a symmetrical seven-membered ring. If you wanted to, you can now try to redraw this to make it look prettier. But uh, you should get full credit as long as you have the right number of carbons in your picture. So we've seen this works in a ring as well. Now, the way this is commonly tested is when you have unsymmetric aldehydes and ketones. Here, this was symmetric again. It didn't matter whether we put the oxygen connected to the number one or the number five. But you had a, a problem where that was important. That's the way this is most likely to be tested. So we should see how to predict those. And it's not very complicated. Would it be more substituted? I believe that's the basic principle. I have to review that myself, but I think that's right. More substituted. That's right. Now, this is called migratory aptitude. Because we're asking which carbon would rather migrate onto the oxygen. We want to know which carbon is going to prefer to migrate onto the oxygen. And this is in your textbook.
Basically, more substituted has more migratory aptitude. More substituted has more migratory aptitude. Looks like there's special things here for a phenyl ring. Phenyl rings have about the same aptitude as secondary carbons. This is a tilde for approximately the same. So a phenyl ring would be like a secondary, more aptitude than a primary and less than a tertiary. They also have a separate entry here for cyclohexyl rings. I don't know how important that is. The most important part here would be more substitution gives you more migratory aptitude. The basic idea is that the more substituted is more likely to migrate. They put in a little extra detail here in the textbook. But the key idea here is that more substitution makes you more likely to migrate. Okay. So we can do a couple of those practice problems. These right here, so that's 49A. Right. So the question is to predict the possible products and then indicate the major product. We want to draw possible and then the major product. It says give all the possible and which one is preferable, then you give it with the O between two different carbons, and then you say the one that's preferable is the more substituted one? Where the more substituted carbon has migrated. That's right. Okay, so it looks like you guys got the right products. It looks like you both are preferring this as the major product, because here this alpha carbon is more substituted than this alpha carbon over here. Actually, this has a special entry in the textbook. This would be a cyclohexyl ring. They said that a cyclohexyl ring is certainly going to be uh, more aptitude than a methyl over here. So this would be our major product. Good. What's it called? Sorry. Pardon? A cyclo. Hexyl. That's right. Oh, okay. If it was just by itself, it would be cyclohexane, but as a substituent, it's called cyclohexyl. So this is what this entry cyclohexyl was referring to when the when there's a cyclohexyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon. Um, but even if we hadn't known about this, we would have just said this is a secondary, which is preferred to a methyl.
for those who don't seem to be giving you guys uh, much trouble, um, you guys, it looks like you got these products right. This is preferred because here the alpha carbon is secondary and this alpha carbon is only primary. Good.